look at how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected life in Taiwan in the year 2020. We take a look at the dangers of laughing gas and its irreversible effects on health. Welcome to Diet Headlines. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. The COVID-19 pandemic affected life in Taiwan in 2020. That was a dark year. Many people are looking forward to a better year ahead. Going into any indoor public space now requires one to have a temperature check and wear a mask. The airport is empty too. Who can think that this year could be so earth-shattering? Looking back at this Taiwan in review for 2020, let's talk about January 21st first. A Taiwanese businessman who flew back to Taiwan from Wuhan. Entering Taiwan requires quarantine and community epidemic prevention. This quick response occurs even though virus information is not yet clear. Still, the education sector was shocked by the news. The school will start on February 11th, postponed by two weeks. For the first time in history, the opening of primary and secondary schools was postponed. In winter vacation supplementary courses were canceled, with disadvantaged students being affected. The special food vouchers printed and presented to them by the Education Bureau of each county and city. <laughs> Half a year passed and the pandemic continues. The advanced subjects test is also postponed for the first time. <laughs> The number of people in a test room was also reduced from 42 people per room to 36 for the first time. While there is much to talk about when it comes to the pandemic, perhaps the biggest challenge was the impact on the economy. The number of calls to this hotline is endless, reflecting the anxiety of the whole community. Now the whole restaurant only has one cook left. All of the others have been put on leave. Executive Yuan drafted a budget of 2.1 billion U.S. dollars to revitalize the economy. The Ministry of Finance, for the first time, extended tax filings. Tax payment could also be applied for a one-year extension or installment payments over three years. In the first year, all interest will be paid by the government. The nation's economic momentum plummeted. The cheers of the fans came to an abrupt end as the Chinese Professional Baseball League All-Star Game was canceled for the first time. Baseball players become ambassadors for epidemic prevention. The opening match of professional baseball is postponed for a month. On April 11, Taiwan's professional baseball kicks off leading the world. We can gradually increase the number of visitors to stadiums. Now when we go to pharmacies, there are fewer people waiting in line for epidemic prevention materials. This is the best proof that we survived a difficult period of the pandemic, and even if daily life has completely changed, history will remember how did we get through this historically important year of 2020. 2020 is a year full of natural disasters and also the year of the pandemic. However, city volunteers continue their mission in safeguarding people's health and well-being. The COVID pandemic has been a great challenge for the medical system and economy for many countries. Lives of many people have also been severely affected. Many lost their jobs and even find it hard to continue living. Despite the pandemic, many NGOs have stepped up and provided full support for many countries. Digi volunteers in Malaysia have thought of many ways to help the medical system of the country. They have also provided much needed assistance for the impoverished families, showing the true meaning of great love and helping out one another. In the beginning, everyone was afraid of the COVID virus because it was still unknown to many. So many of us just stayed home. Later on, the master told us that we needed to protect ourselves, but there are also many sentient beings suffering out there. Many people have lost their jobs and even have troubles feeding themselves. Therefore, we need to be brave and step out to help them. The master's words have hit me that day, so we started to head out and care for others. This pandemic is truly severe. We're all very fortunate that we're still safe right now. To me, we need to learn how to cherish more after this pandemic. Cherish our time and also our lives. We need to make full use of our lives. During this pandemic, 
I've seized every second to make each day full and meaningful. The pandemic has led many countries to be stuck in a tug of war with the virus. It has also taught mankind a big lesson. Only by having a sincere and pious heart, practicing the precepts and loving all beings and the environment can we bring back the balance of our earth, preventing disasters from happening ever again. The master has said that we need to adopt a vegetarian diet. The United Nations also had this report indicating that to reduce global warming, the first thing we need to do is to reduce the intake of meat. Most importantly, we need to respect lives, because all lives are equal. I think that this is a really good time and opportunity for us to head out and promote vegetarianism. It is our duty and responsibility to protect our Earth. We're all here temporarily, so we should not damage our precious Earth. Whatever we can reuse, we will reuse. Whatever we can reduce, we will reduce. It's actually practicing the five R's in our daily lives. We do not know when the pandemic will end, but our love must be continued. Because of the pandemic, we're able to use this opportunity to share with others on what Siji is doing, so that everyone can contribute their love in helping others. During the pandemic, besides caring for one another, we should be humble, be pious, be sincere, and protect all living beings. It is hoped that we can all stay safe during this pandemic, and may 2021 be a better year. In Malaysia, people who are helping Tsuji sew protective gowns for medical personnel include a teacher and a fashion design school student. Both of them are willing to dedicate their skills and time. I'm teacher Chong Ling Ling and a teacher at a Chinese elementary school. My difficulties include that I have to teach a lot of materials. In addition, my students usually share their smartphones with their parents. Therefore, if their parents are at work, we cannot conduct our online courses. We do not even know how the students are doing with their homework. <laughs> I am Feng Xiu Ying, and I am a student at a fashion design school. After the pandemic broke out, I lost my part-time jobs, and my studies have been affected since we have to learn online. It is harder as we cannot discuss things with our teachers face to face. In the past, I have learned to sew handbags with Sister Lini. During the pandemic, City Volunteer Sister Lini asked me if I can help sew protective gowns. I said yes, and I started to sew protective gowns. On social media, there were messages regarding the lack of protective gowns. I can help show protective gowns. I posted messages on my social media and my friends saw it. So, he helped connect me with a doctor at hospital, who is a Chizhi volunteer. I started showing protective gowns. I hope that I can give back to society. What I can do is to provide my skills. The pandemic came suddenly and we have to be flexible. We gradually calm down and think about what we can do. Then we do the work and become stronger. The pandemic could have been caused by humans' collective karma. We must face it, fight it, overcome it together. We must accumulate our blessings and eat less meat to avoid killing lives. This way, we will not create burdens to the earth. I teach fifth graders this year, now teach sixth graders the next year. Since the students have nothing to do at home during vacation, we use the video conference to help them with studies. My main goal is not to make money, but I want them to learn. For 2021, I hope that we will welcome the day when we do not need to wear masks. I hope we can return to normal lives. Life goes on. I hope everyone does well. So the Indonesia chapter has been cooperating with the military and police to carry out pandemic relief work. Recently, city volunteers donated rice, which will be distributed to 493 counties. Police motorcycles carrying rice to be given to the public set off after the kick-off ceremony. This is Hilanda town in South Jakarta, which is listed by the government as a key pandemic prevention area. Frontiers distributed rice for relief. After the pandemic outbreak, Zhiji has been working with the military and police to distribute daily supplies to people in need. This time, they're going to distribute 5,000 metric tons of rice. 
The 5,000 metric tons of rice mentioned by the volunteer will be distributed evenly across the country. From Acha to Papua Barant, with the assistance of police units in 493 counties. During the pandemic, the price of food went up and the number of confirmed cases increased. Members of the public were unable to work and had no income. At this time, they could get Zuji's assistance. To them, their pressure was reduced by more than half. Apart from distributing rice, a quick screening station was also set up by the police and volunteers to help the public do screening and conduct health education. When the pandemic first broke out, the public were very alert and self-prevention was well performed. But now everyone has started to relax, so it is hoped that through the screening to remind everyone to strictly enforce epidemic prevention measures, including wearing masks, washing hands frequently, and maintaining a safe social distance. The uncertainty of the pandemic prevents people from letting go of panic. Yet the government and local organizations work together to stabilize people's mind. Due to the pandemic, the end of the year became less joyful. But New York Shishas still hope to send love. They deliver blankets and supplies to St. Mary's Hospital for children. Compassion and relief is very important, especially in times like our current pandemic. And we need to give help to others who are not as fortunate as we are. Two hundred blankets and two hundred fifty sets of hygienic supplies are to be packed into cardboard boxes. Each box, before sealing, has words and images of blessings handwritten by Tzu Shaos. After drawing Santa Claus, I drew him coming out from the chimney. This is my note. There are two cute students, a boy and a girl. We put many warm blankets into each box. This is for people in need. We bring the same joy to St. Mary's Hospital for children, sharing the happiness of holidays with them. Affected by the pandemic, St. Mary's Hospital for Children canceled celebration events and rejected gifts. After Tzu Shao's sincere contact, the hospital finally agreed to help raise supplies for ill children families. The supplies gathered surpassed previous years. The surprise me is that so many people would actually donate because it, because normally you don't see a lot of people donate to homeless people on the streets, but this is very like heartwarming because you get you just get to see people um, do it from their hearts. The lack of meetings we have, we can get through with things faster. We uh, we're more we're more responsible. From packing to delivering the love. Tzu Shao's work from discussions online to enacting the project, sending love to people in need during the season of thankfulness. Thank you so much. Thank you. In California, city volunteers have been caring for the local residents after the Santa Cruz forest fire took place. As the weather is getting colder, city volunteers brought warm clothes and food to the Hispanic farm workers. Along the corridor, there are cloth curtains and also simple wooden doors. This was once a horse stable. After simple changes, it was turned into a worker's hostel. There are over 10 rooms here, and only one Hispanic farm worker is allowed to stay in one room. We're now at Swanton Farm. After the fire, our job opportunities have decreased drastically. There's also less people living here. Due to the pandemic, job opportunities are very scarce. We're very grateful towards the G because you have provided care and assistance as well as gifts to us. Tsuji volunteers from Silicon Valley have prepared blankets, waterproof jackets, masks, and also Jinxi food products for the farm workers. Tony's house was completely destroyed by the Santa Cruz fire, and her rented house was also burned down. Now she can only sleep in her car. It was scary when I didn't feel like anybody cared. And the stuff you gave me is so beautiful and special. I just love it. I love the good years. It's really special. It touches my heart. Thank you so much. Although the roads are winding and bumpy, the community residents are trying their best to protect this gathering plaza. Before rebuilding their homes, they'll have monthly gatherings, providing care and sharing their stories with each other.
Kevin gas has quietly flown into the market in recent years. This colorless, slightly sweet gas is being abused by many young people. In our series, we investigate the dangers of laughing gas. A 17-year-old girl, Xiaomei, inhaled nitrous oxide for a period of three months, causing neurological abnormalities, and she needs help from others to walk. You can see the white image here. They're abnormal nerve damage. A number of laughing gas patients similar to Xiaomei have appeared in recent years. From 2012 to 2018, the Changgeng Medical System alone admitted nine patients who were almost all paralyzed after inhaling laughing gas. They are about 14 to 19 years old. Our patients are weak and they'll feel that their hands and feet are numb and abnormal. If we ask them, we find that these patients are all long-term nitrous oxide users. Nitrous oxide inhibits the production of vitamin B12, causing symptoms of nerve damage such as paresthesia and muscle weakness. It also causes autonomic nerve damage, resulting in urination problems, abdominal pains, constipation, and sexual dysfunction. In addition, laughing gas can also affect the brain's NMDA receptors, causing the side effects such as hallucinations, amnesia, and depression. There is obvious pigmentation all over the body. After inquiry, it was found that she was inhaling laughing gas due to the lack of vitamin B12. Therefore, her body was showing these skin lesions. The chronic harm of inhaling nitrous oxide are too numerous to document. Don't think that you will be fine if you only do it once or twice. Acute sudden deaths from inhaling laughing gas have occurred repeatedly in Taiwan. A 16-year-old had no vital signs when he was sent to the hospital. Emergency first aid resumed his heartbeat after CPR. Then we did a CT scan and we can see that his brain was very swollen. In his body, there was no poison or medicine, as he was lying in the bathtub when he was found. There was no water in the bathtub as he lost consciousness when he lay there. We think that it was hypothermia caused by inhaling laughing gas. After a curious attempt at taking laughing gas, the 16-year-old fell into a severe coma and after seven days in the intensive care unit, he was pronounced dead. The solubility of laughing gas in the blood is 30 times faster than that of nitrogen. So once you inhale, the oxygen in your blood is not enough. So when humans perceive a lack of oxygen, we will start to breathe heavily. But laughing gas will suppress it. Normal neurological reactions are suppressed, causing severe hypothermia and even loss of life. Suspected deaths from inhaling laughing gas are emerging endlessly, but the official statistics are missing this piece because when forensic doctors examine the body, laughing gas is not tested for. One of the forensic samples is blood, hair, and urine. But when the cause of death is gas, you can't confirm the cause of death, as it's not easy to check for laughing gas now. Our government resources are still limited, so there is a possibility of laughing gas test omission. In the future, laughing gas may be included as a basis of autopsy for sudden death. The poison of laughing gas far exceeds the understanding of the users and the norms of current laws. People think that laughing gas is not a drug and misunderstand that it will not harm the body. So abuse of laughing gas can also harm the body and even cause death. This industrial gas, which does not seem harmful in the past, is now poisoning young people. It is easily available throughout the country. This shows laughing gas is truly a great danger to many young people. Rebellious face is something most children go through while growing up. In our next report, we see how a 14-year-old boy survived his rebellious face at such an international school in Malaysia. Yip Ziyang, who is now 14, went through a rebellious phase and was such a problem for his teachers and mother. In fifth and sixth grade, he slowly changed. 
How did I know? I received a text message from the teacher that he was making trouble at school. He is very curious about things in life, but impatient. Whatever he wants to know, he will just directly ask his teacher. He became impolite. Dealing with the complaints from school, Zi Yang's mother didn't know what to do but to send her son to Ciji International School, hoping this is the right move. I vividly remember the first day Zi Yang came to our school because he looked as if the whole world owed him something. He didn't want to come to school at all. I wasn't used to having so many rules in place for school. It was as if I needed to make a sharp and sudden change. Between the classes, there was one or two minutes of break before the teacher came in, and he would take his friends all over campus causing trouble. Within Ciji, students feel the love. The first time we met, I praised him for doing something good, no matter how small of a detail it was. I wanted him to feel that we are paying attention and that we see the good in him. Father Cheng Wei told me, I have influence over my friends. Instead of leading them to mess around, why not lead them to work hard in our studies? I thought it over and decided I can try that. With the change in mindset, Zi Yang is not only a great help in school, but also no longer worried his parents. I was stubborn before and only cared about how I felt. Now I'm able to compromise and hang out with friends more. With patience and education, a lost child found his direction in life. This is a testimony to the Jinx aphorism that there is no student in this world who is unteachable. Affordable housing units are located near Ciji Banchao grounds, leading volunteers to be invited to set up stalls in the community market. This stall in the community market makes people hungry. It's really good. Initially, I planned to buy some, but it didn't sell. The king oyster mushrooms served with sticky rice, and the Chinese tonic soup are all for free. It is hoped that people will fall in love with vegetarian food once they taste it. It's good to go vegetarian, it does not slaughter animals, and hence we won't have bad vanity with them. I am also vegetarian and have some affinity with Ciji, so I want to bring vegetarian food into this community so that its spirit can be enhanced. The affordable housing units in Banqiao was completed four years ago. There are more than 20,000 residents and the Ciji Banqiao grants is right next door. Vendors are invited to set up stalls, including delicious food and handmade DIY items in the community market. There are eco-friendly spinning tops made of bottle caps. There is also a caterpillar resting on a leaf. The caterpillar is quite special. It is actually made from the thread of a bag. This is made from recycled materials. It is very good. To teach them not to throw things away when it is used, they can think of the ways to use it again. Sharing good thoughts with neighbors also let everyone protect the earth together. As the weather got cold, Tima Central District Chapter and a charity organization brought winter clothes and supplies to the homeless people. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.